I recently watched a video by Techmoan where he used an Amazon Dot to control smart switches around his house and turn devices on and off with the smart home feature. And I thought to myself, I want to do the same, but I want to do it in the shed. Where I don't like mains, I prefer low voltage DC. And after a while of searching around, I found this. And uh, this is, uh, new to me at least, uh, this is a Sonoff SV version 1.0. Um, and Sonoff uh, make a whole range now of smart switches. Well, this is a standard one you may have seen before, the Sonoff 10 amp main smart switch here. And uh, you put your wires in here, the live and the neutral on the left hand side and the output to your load, your lamp or whatever on the right hand side. And uh, this connects to your Wi-Fi and then you're able to turn it on and off via an app. But there is an issue here that there's no earth, so this should be only used on double insulated items. But they've now rectified that with a new range of plug-in smart sockets. And this is the S20 smart socket. Again, 90 to 250 volts AC and 10 amps. So it's practically exactly the same thing. So yeah, this uh, Sonoff SV uh, stands for safe voltage, I believe. So it's 12 to 24 volts DC on the input here on the left-hand side. That powers the Sonoff and... Um, is the power for the output here on the right hand side. There's the uh, relay that switches on or off the output and uh, it's all powered here by this microcontroller and if you know anything about Sonoffs you'll know it's an ESP8266. So here's the ESP8266 over here and we can see its track for its antenna there on the PCB. There's also some programming pins here and a manual on off load button here in the middle. There's an AMS 1117 3.3 voltage regulator for the uh, ESP there, but also interestingly, there seems to be another book regulator here uh, with an inductor and a diode right next to it. Um, and I need to find out a bit more about this because although the Sonoff website says it's 12 to 24 volts on the input, I'm wondering if that's tolerant to slightly higher voltages. And that's because I'd like to use it on my 7S lithium pack. And I'd prefer to use it here on the 24 volt side of the circuit. Well, actually, it's more like 28 volts because I charge each one of these groups of cells up to 4 volts. But having it on this side of the pack between the solar charge controller and the DC to DC converter should make it a little bit more efficient because I'm turning off not only the lights outside but the DC to DC converter itself. But if the Sonos isn't capable of running on 28 volts, well, it's going to have to go on this side, on the 12 volt side of the DC to DC converter, and uh, well, that will just have to do. Well, in ultra fine macro mode, here we can see uh, that chip is an MP2307DN. So let's see if we can find the data sheet. And here it is it's an MPS monolithic synchronous book regulator with an integral MOSFET. So uh, it can provide 3 amps of current, and it says here wide input voltage of 4.7 to 23 volts. Well, that's even worse than the listing on Banggood. So if we scroll here down past the typical application circuit, we can see that the absolute maximum rating, well, so close, it goes up to 26 volts maximum. According to this image here on the Banggood website, it can be powered by the input which is being controlled, or it can be powered separately here from a completely independent power supply of 5 to 24 volts. And if you do that, well, you're able to switch 0 to 30 volts DC. But to achieve that, you need to remove these couple of resistors here next to this jumper and then uh, attach another DC to DC converter, in my case, to actually power the Sonos electronics. So I'm not sure that's going to be a suitable solution for me on this occasion. So I think I'll just leave it on the 12 volt side of the DC to DC converter. 
So now we've worked out where it's going to go in the circuit, I'll get some terminal blocks soldered on and we'll get it wired in. Now sadly I've noticed that when you put terminal blocks in it does cover over the silk screen saying which is positive and which is negative. So I'm going to write those on the bottom and I've forgotten already that's out positive. So we'll put a positive on there, negative on there, negative, positive. And there we have it ready to uh, be powered up with 12 volts. So to put this into uh, pairing mode, I guess you might call it, to connect to your home Wi-Fi, we press and hold the button for 4 or 5 seconds, and then we should see the status LED flashing fairly rapidly. And uh, you can download the eWe Link um, app from your App Store and add a device. Now, uh, here, ours is fla flashing sorry, rapidly, just like that one. So we'll select that and click Next. It then tells us we need to connect to a different Wi-Fi network. And if we go into our settings and Wi-Fi, there it is, I-T-E-A-D. So we will uh, connect to that and go back to the app and click Next. We're then asked to put our normal Wi-Fi username and password in. And once we've put those Wi-Fi credentials in, well, this... Uh, connects the Sonoff to our home Wi-Fi networks. And that's it, it's done, so we can give it a name. And I'm going to call mine Garden Lights, because my 18650 bank powers some garden lights, funnily enough. Um, click, there we go, and complete. Added successfully. And now in the app we can see the garden lights here, and if I click on, you may have just heard the click of the relay, and if I click off, and once again, so that seems to be working absolutely fine. But I also want my Amazon Dot to be able to control it, so in the Alexa app, if we click on Smart Home, we can click on Devices and Discover, and after a few seconds we should be able to find my garden light sun off and there we have it at the top so uh well we're pretty much done right well it's getting dark outside alexa turn on the garden lights okay alexa turn off the garden lights So that's the Sonoff SV Low Voltage DC Wi-Fi Smart Switch that can also be integrated into the Amazon Alexa system. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and Alexa, thanks for your help. That's what I'm here for.